Hello and welcome to this video where we are going to do exercise 1D of the grounding exercise of the grounding part of the course Answer Set Solving in Practice. Then here we have the set of facts that define a graph and we also have these two facts that says say that vertexes 1 and 4 have been selected. And basically this encoding gives us the atom correct if this selection of atoms dominates over or so this selection of nodes dominates all other nodes where we say that if an atom if a node is selected then that node is dominated and if there is an edge and we select one of its nodes then the other node is dominated and then in the next rule, we say that the, the selection is incorrect if there is a vertex that is not dominated. And we say that the selection is correct if it's not incorrect, right? <clears throat> so in a typical, if you wanted to modify this encoding for solving the dominating set problem, we would add here a choice rule to select some edges. We wouldn't have the facts here. And then we would add a constraint that says that it cannot be the case that we do not drive correct, right? Or we could make it easily just deleting these two things, saying that it cannot be the case that there's some vertex that is not dominated. But the idea of this exercise is that we do not choose any atoms, but we give them selection as facts. And then what happens with this program is that this is stratified, and you can go and check in the slides to see what does that mean. And uh, as a result of the fact that the program is stratified, Gringo, or our grounding procedure, the grounding procedure that we have studied, will find the stable model of the logic program. Right. So this is a, a property of the grounding algorithms that we studied that that uh, that if the program is stratified, then the grounding algorithm already gives you the stable model of the logic program. Okay, so here I have copied the logic program, and on this other side, I have the facts. So let's start with it. Here I'm naming the rules R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5. And the first thing, we have to uh, draw the dependency graph of the program. So we have here this first rule that defines the atom D that appears negated in rule 4. Then we can just do a one, a two, and a three. They go to a four, and we say that the edges are negative because the atom here appears negated. Yes, and then we also have a link. So rule four defines i that appears here in R five negated. Then we can just start this there, right? So this is the dependency graph with the labeled edges. And now, with just for our problem, we just have to write what is the proper dependency graph of the program. And for this, we only have to write the same graph, but without the labels. And we can write it here formally, like this. Oops, where I have here the edges R1 to R4. R2 to R4, and also R3 to R4, and finally R4 to R5. Right, and then here it turns out that the, the strongly connected components contain each one just a single rule, so then we can just find a topological order of this now at this point, and one of these is R1 first, then R2 next, R3 next, R4 next, and afterwards, in the end, R5. And if you look at this, all we know that R5 has to be the last one. R4 has to go before R5, but then these can be in any order, right? So then here we can we can try any order of this, and this all will be topological orders of the strongly compo connected components of this graph, right? So, and this leads us to six, right? Because with six possibilities, because with R1, we can have R2 or R3, or this the other way around. 
And then if we put a two first, we also have two options. And with a three first, we also have two options. So in total, we would have six. OK, now let's write here the positive dependency graph. And this is very simple because given that there are no positive edges here, right? then this is just a graph. We have the nodes and no edges, and we can just represent it like this with the empty set. And then we have to define our set LP. And normally, what in general, what we do is that we build this topological order of the strongly connected components of the of the dependency graph. And then if there are more, there's more than one ruling some of these components, we use the positive dependency graph to, to separate them, if possible. And But here, all our sets are singletons. Then we can just get here the same order that we had above. And again, as before, we would have, we could choose among the six possible orders. But it's for us, let's keep the simplest one that is the one that follows the way the program is written. And now we have to define the sets uh, of uh, i that tell us what uh, negative littles have to be protected. But here, but what we know is that if the logic program, if when we look at the graph of the program, there is no loop that contains a negative edge, then, uh, then, then, then all the values of r are empty. Okay, all the set, sorry, all the set as are empty. And in this case, you see there's no loop in this dependency graph. This go to four and this goes to five. There's no loop. So then we already know that uh, these sets are empty for all i that belongs to one to five. Okay, good. So then we already have the dependency gra graph, the positive dependency graph, and we have this order LP and the values of R for every rule. Also, just if you wanted to check this, you can go here and see whether for, for all the negative literals, there is some rule afterwards in the order that defines them. But here we have not D, but the rule afterwards, R5, does not define uh, atoms of the predicate D. And yeah, for R5, not I appears here, and there's no rule afterwards. So there's no need to protect this node. Good. So then let's go on now with the part where we build the ground instantiation. So I've cleaned this part here, and I just keep here what we need, which that is simply this order and the fact that the set R is empty for all rules. Now, here, initially, we have that the facts are this i, and also the set of possible atoms is also i. And let's start with this rule. So we have to consider the set of atoms of this form that are possible, and then we just have to consider this S1 and S4. So we have D1 if S1, and D4 if S4. Now we can simplify this because these two are, fa uh, are facts. So we get these two facts, D1 and D4, and no other ground rules. Then here, we can say that F is I together with D1 and D4. And of course, the facts are also possible atoms, so then we also have this thing here. And now we come to ground this second rule, and we can use all the E's, or we could also try the S first to ground this here, but now let's do the E's that for me, it's a bit easier for doing it, but you could start the other way around. Well, the problem is that if you if we select the Y, we still have to choose the values for the x, right? Well, if we if we start thinking about how can we ground this atom E, we see that we these are the three possible values that we could choose for the x and the y, right? One, two, two, three, or three, four. So let's do this. One, two, two, three, and three, four. 
And then the we have S Y for the where Y is the second argument. We have S2, S3, S4. And in the head we have DX where X is the first argument. So we have D1 if this, D2 if this, and D3 if this. Now clearly we can simplify this because these are facts. But now what happens here is that we actually shouldn't have built in the first place these two because we do not have, because S2 and S3 are not possible, right? Because the only possible values for the S are these S1 and S2 that appear there. Then we can simply delete these two. And now S4 is a fact. Then we can simplify it and we get the fact D3. Then let's move on and ground the third rule. So now we have that the facts are the initial facts plus D3 to D4, and the possible atoms are exactly the same. Then let's do like before with this rule using the edges. We have E12, E23, E34. And then the S takes the first argument. So we have S1, S2, S3. And then the head is D of the second argument of the. So we have D2. D3 and D4, right? And now, as before, we can uh, we see that here, given that S2 and S3 they are not even possible, because the only rules that can give us atoms about uh, about them are these two facts. So then we can simply get rid of S2, S3, and now here E12 is a fact, S1 is a fact. Then we get the fact D2. Now it's the turn of the fourth rule, because we have it here, right? So we are going one after the other in this order that we have chosen. And then we have that the facts are I together with D1 to D4. These are the facts that we have obtained after grounding these three first rules. And the possible are exactly the same, right? Because Everything that is true is also possible. And now here, what we can do just to make this easy, we can say, okay, first we will consider the possible values for Vx, and this is V of 1 to 4. So we have E, V1, not D1, and then the same for V2 to T2, V3 to B3 and B4. Right? And then this can be simplified because these are facts. But what we realize is that all these D1, D2, D3, D4 are facts. Hence, there's no way that this rule is ever going to be fired. So we can just get rid of them. And so actually, you see, I've, see, I've done this thing that first I ground the X here, and then I realize that the Ds are all true, so then the rules the rules can never be fired, right? This is what I've done here. But you could have just seen this at the beginning, just looking at here and saying, okay, for V1, okay, I already have D1, so I cannot ground it. Then for B2, the same story, so that you don't go through all the four steps and just you have a look at this and you see, look, there's no ground instance of this rule. Nice. So then we move on. And of course, now the facts have to be the same because we have not, uh, obtained any any new ground rule so any new fact so then here we copy this and R4 is this ground rule so there's nothing um, involved to do here we ju can just put it here and we can simplify the rule because the I is not even possible right it does not belong to this set so then it's always going to be false. Then we can simplify this and we get the fact C. So that in the end, we have I together with 
d1 fold and correct and also the same thing for the possible atoms right so you see that in the end all the ground, we do not obtain any ground rule with the body, we just got the facts, d1, d4, d3, d2, and c, right? And then, uh, and actually, these facts are, this set of facts is the unique stable model of this stratified logic program, right? And this is what we were expecting, this is what I said at the beginning, given that the program is stratified, the grounding algorithm will compute the stable model of the program. And looking at this intuitively, given that what this means is that given that we have derived the atom correct, what this means is that this selection of nodes, 1 and 4, is a correct solution for the dominating set problem with this graph. And if you now, <coughs> you we look at, at here, we see that, of course, it's a solution because 1 and 4 are dominated and then we also have that 2 is dominated because 1 here is selected and the 3 and, and the 3 here is dominated by this one and yeah this is all we have to check right that the 2 and the 3 are dominated and this is actually what we were obtaining from here and from there right so this is i am also saying this now because it's good when you finish the exercise that you have a look again to check whether the result that you have obtained uh, correct. Okay, so then this was all for the exercise. I hope you have understood it and you have enjoyed the video. So see you in another video. Ciao!